Hello guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having or had a great day today. Today we're going to talk about why your battery keeps going dead. No matter what you do, every time you go back to start the car, the battery is dead. Super annoying, mega frustrating, but today we are going to unveil the mystery and figure out why it's happening and then hopefully we'll be able to fix the problem that you're experiencing. So let's go! It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive, as long as it has four wheels, an engine, and electronics, it has a battery. And as long as you have a battery, there's a possibility that one day you might be experiencing a battery drain problem. Unless you're driving one of these, but um, renewable energies and alternative fuels we'll talk about in another video. Every car has a battery and every car has an alternator. The battery stores the power, the alternator recharges the battery. Now, there are a few things that can cause the battery to go dead overnight, and one of them is, believe it or not, a dirty battery. If the top of your battery is really dirty, it can cause the battery to discharge. Another possible reason is the glove box light. That light sometimes stays on because the switch may be bad or the glove box is not closing properly. Another reason could be the alternator itself. The rectifier in the alternator could be bad and then causing the voltage to be flowing out of the battery into the alternator instead of out of the alternator into the battery. Forgetting to turn the lights off is also a possibility, so we'll definitely explore that option. Or you could have an issue with your ignition switch and when you think that the car is all the way off, you took the key out, the power is still on. Now, let me introduce you to my little friend. This is my digital volt ohm meter. This is a tool that we're gonna use to trace this parasitic draw. I just clicked it on volts, now it's on ohms. These settings here you see in blue are for monitoring dwell and engine RPMs, we're not gonna do that. This is microamps, and then we're putting it on milliamps, and then we're gonna switch it from that now to amps, 10 amps. That's what we're gonna be using now we got our meter set, so now it's time to hook up our cables. So now there are a few different places to hook it up, but what we're gonna be working with today is always working with a common port, which is this port right here. And then because we're gonna be working with amps, we're gonna be looking for the port that caters to amps. So you see that one on the bottom left and it says 10 amps because we are going to hook this meter up in series in the circuit. So let me show you what I mean by hooking it up in series. Now, this is a diagram of a basic circuit. We got a battery, we got a bulb, and we got a meter, the amp meter, and it's hooked up in series. So if you trace from the battery, negative terminal, you see it comes to the bulb, it goes into the bulb, comes out of the bulb, but instead of just going directly back to the battery, it is now has to flow through the meter, going in on the common terminal, the black one, through the meter, then comes out the meter on the red terminal, the amp, terminal then comes out and then hooks back up with the battery and then goes to the positive battery terminal. That's how you monitor how many amps or what the current flow is through that circuit. Believe it or not, a lot of people think that the current flows from positive to negative in the battery, but it actually flows from negative to positive. Now, with our newfound knowledge, we're gonna apply it to fix our own cars. So we got our meter, we got our battery, we're undoing the ground terminal from the battery. That's where you should be hooking it up at. We got our leads, we're gonna hook our leads up. Yeah, I put some electrical tape on that lead, turn it from a red lead to a black lead. Hey, do what you gotta do, it alleviates the confusion. So we are hooked into the circuit. So now we are officially in series with the circuit of the car. So we are now monitoring how much current is flowing through the car. And as you can see right there, it is 1.14 amps. That is not acceptable, folks. That is way out of spec. Now, the correct specification is 0.02 on the meter or 20 to 50 milliamps. That's what's acceptable. But as you can see on the meter right now, it is reading 1.14 amps, which is equal to 1,140 milliamps, which is way out of specs. So there's something on draining this battery, so now it's time to go and find a consumer. Hey, let's go. All right, so now we go back to the car after we figure out where all our fuse boxes are, and this is a fuse box that's in question. So what we're gonna do is we still got our meter hooked up, and while we're doing that, we're gonna be pulling fuses. Always remember to monitor the current flow through the meter with each fuse that you pull. Now, each fuse controls a particular circuit in the vehicle. So now let's say something was on in the vehicle like we spoke of earlier, maybe the glove box light is on or maybe the light in the trunk might be on, now you don't know, or maybe it could be, let's say, um, a power seat motor that is shorting, you don't know. But the thing is, when you are monitoring the current flow through the circuit, 
if you pull the correct fuse for that offending circuit, the voltage, not the voltage, but the current flow through that circuit will be reduced. Now, this big fuse is actually a fusible link. So it has like three or four different fuses in it. So it's similar to the fuses that I've been pulling earlier, but this one is larger. So it carries a lot more current into the vehicle. And as you see, we pulled it, there's no change. So we're replacing it. Now we still need to pull this other one that's right over here. They're kind of difficult to take out because they're really not made to be, you know, taking out, putting in, taking out, putting in. They're pretty hardy. So um, you got to pry on it a little bit using a little pocket screwdriver and be careful not to crack or break the fuse thing. But I want to unplug it. And as you can see, what do you know? The current draw fell off from 1.14. Now we're down to 0 0.03, which is in spec. So what we have to do now is figure out what components are being um, protected by this particular fusible link. So we're on to the next point. Now, this is a diagram of the fuse box that we're actually working on. As you can tell, this would be the positive battery terminal, right? The battery would be right here, right? So this is the fuse box where we're just working in. So um, just as an identifier, there, there are two relays in there. If you look close, you'll see them. So this is the backup relay and this is the horn relay. We're just using them as um, marker points so that we know where we're at. But what I really want to focus on is the fusible link that's right here. Remember, there are two fusible links in there. The one that's here that when we removed it, we saw that the current draw was re reduced. And then there's the first one that removed was, was brown in color. We removed it and nothing happened. So this is the fuse box. So this is a fusible link. And then this is the other fusible link. But this is the one that we're interested in. Let's look at another diagram. This is look at it now from a different angle again. Backup lamp relay here, horn relay here. So we use that as our markers so that we know we're in the right place, right? And then F to M says fusible link, right? So F, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. So that's how they, you know, communicated to you that these are two fusible links in this fuse box. So there's a 50 amp, there's a blank space, and I'll show that to you. I'll let you know that in a few minutes. There's a 40 amp and a 40 amp. Right. So now, since we know what's there, we need to be able to identify what these go to and what circuits they go to. And that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you. All right. So on the top of the fuse cover, there's usually a diagram telling you what fuse does what. So that's the BCM, the ETS radiator fan and a radiator fan. BCM for body control module, ETS for electronic torque shift, rad fan, radiator fan. Now looking at the diagram we looked at earlier, we see the slot for ETS is X'd out, meaning there's no electronic torque shift in this vehicle. So we cross that out. Now we move on to the body control module circuit and the radiator fan circuit. We're using the process of elimination to isolate the circuit that is faulty because in this one fusible link, there are possible three things that could be wrong. And we just canceled out the electronic torque shift. That's out because this car is not outfitted with that. So now I'm going to attempt to isolate the radiator fan circuit and then recheck the current draw to see if it falls off because you could also have a faulty radiator fan that could be causing that. So I unplugged it. And after I'm plugged it, now I'm going to monitor to see if the current draw has changed. If it hasn't changed, that means that, whoa, see, it is still the same. So we have to now cross out the radiator fan circuit because that's not the issue. So that only leaves the body control module as the culprit. So now going deeper, we have to now interrogate the body control module circuit to see what is on that circuit. Systems controlled by body control module directly. And as you can see, there is a list. So you have to now identify all these different components and check each and every one to see if they're on or if they are um, hot to the touch, if they're shorting out, but just to, just to list them, the body control module uses the power door lock system. It monitors that, power, supplies power for that. Remote keyless entry, the sunroof, power windows, the power seats, room lamp timer, meaning when you close the door, the light stays on and then after like a, a couple of seconds and it goes out. Warning chime, just to list a few of the different circuits that the one module controls. So now when we had removed that fusible link and we saw that our draw 
or parasitic draw almost disappeared, right? It went into specs. It is one of these circuits, these items that is consuming the power. So now you're going to have to now go and check with the door locks, maybe not the door locks, but or maybe the remote keyless, maybe not there, but definitely power windows. See what's going on with that. The sunroof, make sure that the sunroof motor isn't hot to the touch. The power seat motors, make sure that they're not hot to the touch. They could be shorted out. Make sure that the lights inside the car, they're not on, right? In the roof light by the rear view mirror or in the back. The chime, well, I guess you would hear that if something was wrong with it. But what I'm trying to get at is this. This is a list of all that it controls. And if you go through each and every component and check on them, you will find the problem. I ended up finding the problem with the interior lights. One of the lights were on in the back, causing the power draw, the current draw. And when I fixed the problem, the power draw went away. Thanks for watching, folks. I know this was a long one, kind of technical, kind of difficult, but I have the confidence that you understood what I was trying to say. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Reach out to me. I'll be sure to answer them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Cool runnings.